Hi there, this is Pei, SRKK's Customer Success Specialist. Today, I am going to present to you 4 tools to digitally transform your work from home experience. So, what do I do? I specialize in adoption change management and training workshops for Microsoft 365. My priority is to ensure that you and your business achieve your business goals by successfully maximizing the use of Microsoft solutions that you have purchased or are going to purchase. Your success is our success. To begin this session, we will first talk about digital transformation. So what is digital transformation? Have you seen the advertisements along Federal Highway showing hashtag Digital Malaysia? If you do or don't know anything about it, I will provide you a simple explanation for it now. Digital transformation, well, it means that using technology to transform your business processes to make sure you do not lose out in the market. There are several things you have to prioritize in order to digitally transform your business. Firstly, engage customers especially your customers, empower your employees, optimize operations, and also transform your products and business models. So, there are actually five main benefits obtained by organizations undergoing digital transformation in Malaysia. Firstly, you will have greater productivity due to all the technology used. With great pro greater productivity, there comes higher profit margins. And higher profit margins has a low, more cost reduction, and you have an increased revenue from new products and services. Lastly, you will have improved customer advocacy. However, there are also barriers to digital transformation in Malaysia. Your number one barrier would be the lack of organizational leadership. We know that most companies are still very old school, so they do not actually have an idea on how to execute this digital transformation. We are actually here to help you with this. And secondly, our government has not really been supporting until now. And also there is also lacking of the ICT infrastructures. And third and foremost, cyber security threats. Well, it is unavoidable that ransomware and spams and phishing and viruses are happening everywhere, every hour, every day. Okay? So, before the modern workplace, we have always worked with a top-down hierarchy. That means what your boss says, you must do it, even though you have moved online. In the modern workplace, there are no more barriers. This is to say modern workplace encourages the flat-based hierarchy. You and your boss collaborating with one another. So, welcome to the modern workplace. The modern workplace with Microsoft 365 is a complete and intelligent and secure solution to empower employees. It unlocks creativity, it is built for teamwork, it is integrated for simplicity, and it has intelligent security. However, the main point of this modern workplace right now is actually built for teamwork. So why teamwork? Microsoft has done their research and they found out that with teamwork, there is two times more collaboration. It means that 50% more time is spent on collaborating and with collaboration, you can work internally, externally or remotely. So you can be having your Starbucks, having your dessert while communicating across organizations, locations and time zones. Not only that, you can also connect with people of different workforce, different divisions, different departments in your organizations. And lastly, and most important, is employee engagement. They found out that employee engagement 
increase and with the increase of employer engagement, profits also increase together. So now, Office 365, you have four logos here. From the left is Exchange Online, which most of you are familiar with, Outlook. Next, it's OneDrive for Business. It looks like a cloud. Third, Microsoft Teams. And fourth, and the last one is SharePoint Online. So before these four, let me introduce the Office 365 web experience. It is actually simple, personalized, and built for teams. How do I get into this experience, you may ask. So first, you go into www.office.com. Now I will show you a demo of this. Okay. This is my Office 365. You can see I have Outlook, OneDrive, Teams, and SharePoint. But I know that most of you will be wondering, oh, I only have Outlook, OneDrive, Words, Excel, and PowerPoint, but I do not have the rest. How come? Well, this is because this part of it shows the more frequently used apps. If you don't frequently use it, it does not appear here. So if it does not appear here, how do I know or how do you know whether you have these apps? All you have to do is click all apps and you can find whatever apps your license has provided you with. That is your Microsoft license. So you can see I have all these apps and so on and so forth. Okay, moving back, you can see not only I can find apps, I can also see documents that are recommended that I have opened recently or edited them. I can pin my documents. I can find documents that are shared with me and I can discover other documents. Okay. Then lastly, I can find my OneDrive files here and my SharePoint files or my SharePoint sites to be exact. Okay, back to this slide. Now we will go into Exchange Online. Just to remind you, this is only more of a tech update rather than a in brief introduction to Exchange Online because most of you are most likely familiar with Exchange Online. Okay, before the tech update, first I would like to say that Exchange Online is also meant to connect, organize, and get things done. It is filled with AI intelligence, artificial intelligence. It helps you with time management. It had consists or comprised the best of Office 365 and it has trust in your terms of security. So, demo now. Okay. The tech update from Outlook. Okay, as you can see, this is how Outlook looks like in the web version. So, I don't know if you know about the dark mode. Well, the dark mode is a hype now in which that it's supposed to save your battery of your devices. So it is encouraged that you use dark mode. So in the online version of Outlook, you can turn on dark mode by clicking the gear icon, which is the settings, and turn it on. It looks something like this. But then, when you read your emails, you may find it a little too dark to your liking. So how do you actually change this to a brighter mode? Well, you can just click the sun icon here and it turns on the lights. If you do not want this, you can just turn it off again. Okay? But what about your outlook in your desktop version? Well, there is also the dark mode. All you have to do is select file, select options, and in the office team right here, select either dark gray and select OK. 
it wouldn't be that dark. Okay. Or if you prefer a darker mode, you can go back to options, select black. It will be similar to the one in the online version. And as usual, you want your message to be brighter, select the sign. Okay. Okay, next. Now we will go into calendar. So your calendar will look something like this. Same thing with your desktop app. Okay. So I know most of you know how to create meetings. So I'll just take you briefly through it. So in this test, in this online version, when I click a new event, I will get something like this. So what is new here is the scheduling assistant. I can check people schedule. So example, I type in Isaiah Langer. I want to meet with this colleague for a meeting. And I want it between 10 p.m. and 12 a.m. However, this person, you are not sure whether he is busy or not. With this scheduling assistant, you can find out whether is he available for the meeting or not. And not only that, they will also suggest free time for both of you to conduct the meeting. And one more thing, if you realize Teams meeting, you can actually enable this to do an online Teams meeting. Okay. For the desktop app, same thing, however, slightly different. To create a meeting, as usual, select new meeting. Okay. Then, example, I want my colleague to join. And the next thing, Teams meeting. Before Teams meeting, scheduling assistant. I would like to check her schedule. So if people do not have or do not share their schedule with you, it will be blocked like this. You can't see what they are doing. It means they are busy at this time. However, those who share it, you can see something similar like this. Okay? Then, if you go back, you select Teams meeting. Teams meeting will appear something like this. So, they those who do not have Microsoft Teams, they can actually select this and enter into a Teams meeting via their browser. If they do, they are on the go, they can just call the toll-free number. Each country has their own specific toll-free number and give the conference ID. Through this, they can just call in and have a meeting with you. Okay? That's all for Outlook. However, I know that some of you may ask about this email that you will receive, my email. So, if you receive my analytics, it is actually something for you to pay attention to as your KPI. It can reflect as your KPI. Okay. Example. My analytics. Okay. In this my analytics, you see something like this. Whether are you focused? Do you collaborate a lot? Should you book your focus time and all this? So since you say KPI, well, don't worry about it. This is for your eyes only. Your boss, your bosses won't find out about this. 
it is for you to change your habit and have a work-life balance as Microsoft wants you to be healthy in your work-life balance. Okay, that's it for Exchange Online. Now, moving forward, we are in OneDrive for Business. What is OneDrive for Business? Well, you know your uh, iCloud for your Apple devices and also Google Drive. Well, it is the same thing, the cloud storage. So OneDrive. For OneDrive, you can share and work together on your, all of your files. You can access the files from all your devices, share inside or outside your organization, collaborate with Office, which is your Word, PowerPoint, and Excel, and also find your files quickly. Before I show you the demo, I would like to show you this first, the three main icons that you would see. First, the cloud icon on the left. It means online only files. It does not take up any of your storage space in your computer or your phone. However, when you open the file, it will become a green tick with white, inside a white circle. This means it is locally available. It temporarily takes up your storage in your computer. However, if you want to frequently use a file, we would suggest you to always keep the file on this device. It means it is permanent. It will take up both your cloud storage and the storage in your computer. So for the demo. Okay. First, I would like to demo to you the desktop app. So in this desktop app, you can see several things. First, the cloud, and you can see a human here, human icon. This means that this file is being shared. Okay. Next, you can see the permanently or the always available file on this device. This is also taking up my storage space. Not only this, when I open a file, such as this, it takes up my storage space here. Okay. So, since it is a drive, how do I check for setting? So, I select my Google, my OneDrive here. I select settings. I can find out my storage space left. But I have used only 31 megabyte out of 1 terabyte. And I can also add additional accounts. So it will appear something like this. Okay. If you were to add your personal account and if you pay attention to the bottom right, your personal account will turn gray while your work accounts will be in blue. Okay. Next thing. This seems my private info here is actually taken out of space and I do not have any more space. How do I free it up? So I right click and select free up space. It will go up to cloud. This includes this, this also the same thing. And not only that, I can also share files. So what I can do, I right click, select share. Something like this will appear. So here you can set permissions. For example, anyone with the link, people in Contoso or your organization with the link, people with existing access and specific people. So first two is self-explanatory. The third one, it means that if someone has given you access to their files and then they remove you, so they can actually give you the access again. And the specific people is also self-explanatory. You can give to only specific people in your organization. I think most of you will ask me, how come I cannot click anyone with the link? Well, due to your organization's policy, most people would disable this function. Next, 
There is also the setting for allow or disallow editing the file. You can also set expiration date and set password for the file you want to share. Okay, once you have set that, you can either send an email through here by selecting the name of the, your recipient, which is already inside your organization. For example, her and give her a message. This will be sent to her Outlook or if I do not want to do it this way, I can just copy link. Copy and then paste the link in your email. Okay, so another question you, you, uh, most customers will usually ask. Once I have shared, I would like to remove them. How do I do that? You select, right click share, same thing again. However, you select the three, the ellipses here for more options. You will see manage access in here. If you have shared to people, the people will appear down here under direct access. You can just remove them. So for this case, I select share for this. Manage access. Oh no, I can't see anyone. This must be because this person is an owner of the OneDrive, means your manager owns or the global admin owns your OneDrive. Okay. What about this? Okay, I can't really see it. It means it is owned by your admin. Okay. How about the web version of OneDrive? The web version of OneDrive will look like this. So you have my files on the left, recent files that you have access or use. You have shared, you have discover, and you have recycle bin. So recycle bin, it's only 93 days for two stages of recycle bin. You can see there's a second stage recycle bin here. So by after the 93 days, your files are gone and your admin cannot save your files anymore. So how do I share files here? It's the same thing. Select this share icon. And you'll find something like this, similar to what I've shown you just now. Also, to manage access, you can select the ellipses here. Select manage access. And here. Okay. That is all for OneDrive. Next. Moving on. Teams. Okay. Teams is actually Microsoft's baby because it is the hub for teamwork in Microsoft 365. So Microsoft Teams has five main functions. You can have chats, you can do meetings, you can have calls, call people with Microsoft Teams. You can have access to all your files, including your OneDrive files. And you can have apps and workflows in your Microsoft Teams. So what can Microsoft Teams do for your business? Firstly, it can transform workplace collaboration. It means that you can actually interact with other people or and other from other divisions in your organization. And you can streamline your business processes. It makes things easier for your business. It connects everyone on a single platform. Indirectly, you cannot say that you do not know anyone in your organization. Lastly, it provides enterprise grade security and compliance. In this scenario, 
if you were to actually put in your IC number or your credit card info. Microsoft Teams or Microsoft 365 is actually smart enough to block your message from being sent to anyone. This is how Microsoft is safeguarding your information. For the demo. Okay, first, I will show you the web version of Microsoft Teams. Okay. So in Microsoft Teams, the web version and the desktop app is similar. You can see your activity, those activities that you have done, or you can see activities that people have mentioned you and all that. Next, you have chats. You can have one-to-one -one conversation with somebody, private message. You can also have group messages here. Teams, okay. In here, you have several teams here. So from what you can see, the first team. So teams can be your division or your organization. But best practice is to use it as your division or department. So whenever you create a team, general will appear. And all these sub teams or you can say sub divisions are called channels. So this one, channels, best practice, you can create it as a project under your division, subdivision, or any other projects or teamwork that you need to do under your division. This is the best practice from Microsoft. However, the new feature for Teams is that you have, you, so you see this keypad here? This means it is a private channel you can actually make a channel private to your own division. So in the case that if you have some private projects or very important projects that are confidential, you can make it private and only invite certain members in your retail group or your team, your department group to this project. And also the others in your team or your department won't be able to see this channel. It is owned by you. Okay, in a team, you have posts. This post looks like this. It is similar to what you can say as Facebook. However, it is more than Facebook. I can do conversations or I can do announcements. Then I can also attach files either from my OneDrive, from my desktop or from other teams and channels that you are involved in. I can have emojis. I also can have stickers to make things interesting. Okay, so can I do all this? I can press send here and I'll get something like this. So you can see there's a blow a horn here. This is an announcement. And with a sticker that is customizable, I can reply to each post like this. Not only that, if you notice the Elias mention, so Elias mention is similar to your Instagram or WhatsApp. Facebook. You can Elias mention people. However, Microsoft Teams makes it easier for you instead of Elias mention everybody in this channel, you can Elias mention the channel itself. So everybody in this channel will get the message. here. See, you can find your channels here. 
and then when you send a message, everyone gets the message in the activity feed. Okay. Not only that, you can also put in files, like I mentioned, it's not attached files, the files will appear here. Under files tab, then I have wiki where I can do a Q&A session okay, to show you better. Okay, I can have wiki here. How to make things easier. In my teams in the desktop version, which is very much similar, I can have wiki here. Okay, this one may be an issue because it is, I would say, sometimes SharePoint is down, has down time, so I may not be able to access my wiki. Okay, next, I can have other types such as Don't forget, whatever is seen in your web app is actually similar to your desktop app for Microsoft Teams. So here, when I select at the tab, I can have all these apps inside. There are more than 250 apps, including third party apps and Microsoft apps. So the best practice for add a tab is actually to add documents or things that you would frequently see or use. So that's all for here. Next, calendar. If you see your calendar in Microsoft Teams, you will see something like this. So if you go back to your Outlook calendar, here, it's the same, right? At 6 p.m., there is a hello event here. Hello event at 6 p.m. This means that Teams is actually synchronized to your Outlook calendar. Then you can have your calls here. I can have speed down, contacts, history, and lastly, voicemail. If people do not pick up your message, your calls, it will go straight to voicemail. Then files and access recently used files, teams files. Here I can have my OneDrive files. Okay. And also I can add extra cloud storages like Dropbox, Box, Share File, and Google Drive. All these are actually subject to your policy. Okay. Files. OneDrive. Here. You can see here? Yeah. Okay. Then, lastly, here, the ellipses here, I can add extra apps. So the main feature of Teams is actually meetings. So in the meetings, I can actually create an ad hoc meeting. So how do I create an ad hoc meeting? I select Teams, example, like your department, I would like to have a, an ad hoc meeting, I can select Meet Now. So in this Meet Now, I can say a gen meeting and select meet now. Okay, then you can invite people here. Then you can share your screen. You can also have more actions such as record your meetings. So Everybody is 
needs to be careful of what they say. Okay. Then when you share your screen, something like this will appear. It means you're presenting. So you can give access to people like team viewer. Okay. Next thing. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Not only that. Example. I can also blur my background. So, here, I can turn on a video and blur my background. This is especially useful if you have any information behind, like if you have written things on your whiteboard behind you and you would like to hide those information, it will be beneficial. Then I can chat here as well. I can show whoever is in the meeting. I can add more people in. Okay, that's all for Teams. Okay, back to the last point, which is SharePoint Online. Okay, SharePoint Online. If you know your intranet and all this, or your SharePoint on-prem, now it is just the online version. Okay. What is SharePoint Online? SharePoint Online is actually an intranet or portal. So you can share news, you can have communication sites. So communication sites are like the main page to your internal organization's intranet or else you can say your organization's personal web page for you and your colleagues or your organization's employees only. Then you can have hub or associated sites. These are mainly for your departments and you can have home sites like lending experience and all that. Okay. So SharePoint, the main thing is to power collaboration and also to promote intelligent workplace. So for SharePoint, it has file sharing and content collaboration. You can share data and business processes solutions. You can communicate and share employee experiences. And lastly, knowledge sharing and discovery. Okay. Not only that, it also has security and governance. And lastly, customization and extensibility. Okay. Customize them. Our company offers customization for SharePoint. So it also involves security, AI, search, automation, and extensibility. So now you have OneDrive, you have Teams, and you have SharePoint. But common question again, all three, they are all cloud storages. So why should I use all three of them? Well, to make things simple, OneDrive is your files. It is personal to you, but still owned by your organization. So in the event that you are supposed to move to a sister company to or to another division, you can bring your files with you. Teams. Teams is actually meant for collaboration. So your files will be shared among your team members. So if you move divisions or you move to a sister company, the files do not follow you. And SharePoint, SharePoint it is shared among your organization. So this is how to differentiate between OneDrive, Teams and SharePoint. And before going further into this, I would like to inform that Teams is built on top of SharePoint. So whatever files are safe in Teams are actually safe in SharePoint. So you can have intelligent file experiences and intelligent content services. So in this OneDrive, you can create, edit, view files on any devices. You can scan documents, receipts, whiteboards. This is only meant for your mobile devices. You can organize and share your files. You can also sync files to PC and Mac and work offline. 
teams collaborate, create view, all this, chat calls, meetings, I already mentioned earlier, and it's a customizable hub for a teamwork. You can create your own specific teams and all that. Lastly, SharePoint, you share the files to a broader audience. You can capture and distribute knowledge. Oops. And you can create intranet sites, news, lists, apps. It has intelligent content management. So SharePoint, as you can see the arrow, it is involving Teams and your OneDrive. Okay. So like I mentioned just now, it has intelligent, all three has intelligent, have intelligent file experiences and intelligent content services. You can view 320 plus file types, share, collaborate in real time, find files that matter to use streamline processes. It also has these services in which that AI powered, you have access controls, you can control the access to your files, you can have data loss prevention policies, you can have retention management, you can have Microsoft information protection and intelligent encryption. So just to remind you again, OneDrive is your personal but still owned by your organization. Teams is for working with your teams SharePoint is with your organization. So for the demo, okay. In here, you can see when I select SharePoint in my office.com, I will be redirected to this. I can have news from various sites that I follow. I can have sites that I frequently visit. Links that people use you can have documents you can have all these bookmark documents that are saved for later so now for a communication site or your landing page it looks something like this in your internal organization's web page so you have all this all these are customizable so you see it is sharing information to your organization so everybody can see things that is like events you can have speaker series and all these events and all the things that are related to your organization okay so hub sites and associated sites what this means is that your department you have like sales and marketing department. So each site, your subdivision sites will appear something like this. Then you can have a document library or your EDMS or your file server. So all your documents will be stored here. Then you can share your documents. You can also list things like in sales and marketing, they have a list of products that everybody can refer to. So example, they have product list of game controller, TVs, headphones, speakers, and all that. I will have my recycle bin. So if you were to share the file, it is the same thing as your OneDrive. Same exact thing. Okay. So that's it for SharePoint. So, to recap and this whole webinar, there are seven tips. So, since you are actually on the cloud as you are in the Microsoft solution, they will say do less creating documents locally and you save more to the cloud. Don't take up storage space and all that. Next. Send less attachments, share it via link. Don't do feedback via email. You can do add comments and add mentions in documents directly. I'll show you this later. Then you can ask people to do edits through 
activity version history or track changes. You do not have to email them to do a multiple edits. You can also do less formal meetings. You have your Teams meetings right now, you can do it there. Because face-to-face -face meetings actually takes up more time than you think. And do more typing, the autosave function turns on when you are on the cloud. And lastly, don't search everywhere for your files. Search it in office.com. So I will show both the version history, comments, add mentions, and the search files now. Example. Back to office.com. If I want to search something, let's say I cannot remember the file name, I can say I want to search for sales. So when you search for something very general, okay, you can see your files or other people's files, people that are involved in sales, SharePoint sites that are involved in sales. So if I go individually, I can see files, I can see SharePoint sites, I can find people. Only that I can find news related to sales. Okay, this is the first thing. Next, version history. Okay, when I select, when because my PowerPoint is on the cloud right now. So when I select the name of it, I can select version history. I can see who modified and open to the previous version if you do not like the version that somebody has done yet. Okay, and you see here on the top left, you will see autosave function is always on. You don't have to worry about it. Okay, not only that, like Elias mentioned, documents like giving feedback. Okay, when I do new comments here, I can Elias mention somebody. Okay, example, let's mention her. When she receives the email, she receives the comment at a specific spot to do the changes. So when she receives the email and selects it, she will be redirected to the spot in this file to make changes. So this is how Microsoft works for you instead of you working for Microsoft. Okay. So that's it for this webinar session. Before I end the webinar session, I'd like to uh, go further into this. Okay. So. I know if you are a new customer, you may not be familiar with the services and offerings by SRKK. And if you are existing customers, we do offer extra services such as digital workspace, system consulting and services, business continuity and IT security, and lastly, IT managed services. So, such as digital workspace we do with SharePoint, Nintex, Power BI, Grand Management System, Power Automate, and Power Apps. So, for example, System Consulting and Services, Office 365, Microsoft 365 Asia, Hardware Supplies like Laptops and Desktops, Microsoft Exchange, and other servers like Simplivity, Aruba, all these all related to server solutions. Thirdly, business continuity and IT security. We also deal with Fortinet, Bitdefender, Symantec, Kaspersky, Azure, APC, VMware, VM. We also do data recovery. Lastly, IT managed services or SSP. So we do system backup, system protect, SharePoint system support programs and many more, such as hardware replacement and also IT relocation and consulting and services. So, just before we end this session, we 
people. I would like you to evaluate this session. If you think we can improve on this, please leave us a feedback here. Please leave your questions and we will answer it promptly in the question and answer section or the chat section. Okay. So we will get back to you or if you have any questions about solutions and all that, we will link you to our sales specialist. So thank you again for joining this Q&A section. We will answer you promptly. If we have missed you out, we will reply to you as soon as possible. Or you could leave us an email through sales at srkk.com or call us for more information. We will get back to you as soon as possible. Like we like we said earlier, your success is our success. Thank you very much for attending our ses webinar session for today. I hope you have learned something different with your Microsoft solutions. And if you have not embarked in your Microsoft journey, we are always here to help you. Thank you very much again and have a good day. We hope to hear from you soon and give you a success journey, successful journey with Microsoft. Thank you.